Hello, motion system and quality type to keyframe. Make sure this box is ticked. And we're gonna add the animated collision mesh. Right. And hide all so we can see the visual model as well. There it is. Now we're going to create an object called a bone. And to do that, you go to the create panel all the way over to the systems tab, press the bones button. And you press once in the scene and you get the bone. And in order to create the bone, you have to left click again, and that will create a nub. And then you have to right click to close the chain and delete the nub because you only want one bone in the chain. Make sure the bone is centered to origin and doesn't have any rotation. Name it scene root. Press down the select object help select object tool and press the H on your keyboard. Now we're going to select the visual model as well as the static BHK radio body helper. we're going to link these to the bone. And to link them, first you select the objects you want to link to the bone, then you press the select and link button. Now press H on the keyboard again, and double click on the object you want to link to, in this case, same root. And they're linked. And to check out the link, you go to the select object tool again, press H, it will look like this. If you can't if you can't see this object, make sure this is ticked. See? This has to be ticked for it to look normal. Normal. Now we're gonna select the BHK reader body for the animated part. Press the select and link. And we're going, li going to link this to the visual model, which in this case is Box two. We check the hierarchy again, and that's the way it should look. In case you're curious, these two should be outside the hierarchy. And that's because the NIST tools exporter will bake them in automatically. And that's what I have to say about creating collision for animated models. Let's move on to actually animating the object. Now we're getting to the fun part, creating the actual animation. To make it easier to work, hide everything except the visual model. When you want to create animation, you always start in the time configuration menu. It's located at the bottom of the screen and looks like a document with a clock on it. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll see a description called time configuration. All you have to do here is set the end time to 180. And as you can see here, by the number 30, 30 frames equals 1 second. That means that the total animation will be 6 seconds long, except we're going to fit both a forward and backward animation here. So it will take 3 seconds to open, up to frame 90 on it, and then 3 seconds to close at frame 180. So let's select the object you want to animate, and then set two dummy keys at the beginning and end. And set two more keys in the middle of the animation, one on each side. Now we're going to go into the motion panel, which uh, you're going to spend a lot of time in if you want to animate for Oblivion. If you haven't used the frame slider before, I can tell a little about that. Um, frame 0 is the initial state of the scene, and 89 is what happens at the end of the forward animation. Frame 90 
is the initial state of the backward animation. And frame 108 is the last step of the backward animation. And uh, you see this information here controls what happens at the different, uh, different keyframes. So let's zoom forward to frame 89. We're going to rotate this box on the C axis to make it look like it's opening. So we make sure we are at rotation and that we are affecting the C axis. I'm going to enter the value 90. Now you can slide the frame slider back and forth and you can see the door opening. If we go to frame 90, it still has the information from the initial keyframe, which is the closed. So you have to copy the information from frame 89 to frame 90. And then it closes like that. Opens and closes. We're going to show something. We set the speed to one, one fourth so we can see what's happening. We press the play button. This smoothness can be a cool effect, but in most cases it's just disturbing. To get rid of that, we're going to go do something that's rather complicated, but it's rather easy to do too. So we select the object, right click in the scene, and choose Curve Editor. Here you can see the tangents of the animation. It's rather complicated both to explain and to understand, even for me. But to fix it, it's very easy to fix it. So you select all the tangents, you press the Set Tangents to Linear button, and press them. This will create a smooth animation. Go back to the time configuration, reset it to normal time. 